Okay, Namaskar and a very warm welcome to everyone joined in today on our 28th Know Your Species, Know Your Zoo talk. This talk is being organized as part of the ongoing Azadi Ka Amrit Mohatsa, which, uh, which CZ is taking forward through a massive outreach campaign entitled Conservation to Coexistence, The People Connect. Under the helm of this campaign, we will be showcasing 75 conservation priority species and 75 zoos, highlighting one species and one zoo each week. We are currently in week 28 of the celebration with the smooth coated otter as the species in focus and the Dr. Shama Prasad Mukherjee Zoological Garden as the zoo in focus. So joined in today to speak to us on the species is Dr. Syed Anul Hussain. Dr. Hussain is an internationally acclaimed for his contribution in the field of wildlife science. He did his doctorate on the smooth coated otters from the National Chambal Sanctuary in 1993. And he's among the few to obtain a Doctor of Science degree in the field of wildlife science. He has over 150 scientific publications which cover different aspects of research. He's also the member of the IUCN Otter Specialist Group and the Focal Red List Authority on the Otter Species of the World. He retired from the Wildlife Institute of India in June 2020 as a faculty member, but continues to spearhead and coordinate wildlife conservation programs across the country. The na namely, the programs that he coordinates are the Ganga Rejuvenation Project, the Ganga Aquatic Biodiversity Conservation Project, both of which fall under the purview of the National Mission for Clean Ganga. He will speak to us today more on the species in focus. So over to you, sir. Thank you, Arundhati. And I take this opportunity to thank Sonali, Dr. Sonali, who is uh, my former colleague, and we did very good field work also. And I, also I take this opportunity to thank everyone at CZA who are conducting this program and uh, spearheading the conservation of 75 species through public awareness. It's a good opportunity. And uh, if you permit, I can start now. Yes, sir, please start. Okay, before I start, I would like to show some uh, links of different species of otters. Can you see the screen now? Yes, yes, sir, it's visible. Us, what we see the oscillation of smooth coated water from Sarai region. This video has been taken by students at school. That were showing a typical habitat of smooth coated water and this species. You can note the morphology of the water. Previous thing we saw, you saw the Russian order, there is not significant difference and you see in movie or in photos. Here you see small which is very small around half meter in size and around four kgs. I will talk about that in a while. So please note uh, the streamlined body of uh, Otters. They belong to family Mustelidae and the subfamily Lutherini. The Mustelidae in India contains larger number of small carnivores than any other families. Here you can see the typical otters. They have whiskers for detecting prey or for movement of the prey species underwater. They have web, web feet which is uh, adapted for swimming. They have paddle-like muscle muscular tail, which uh, uh, helps in maneuvering them in water. And they have dense fur, eh? dense fur, which protect them from, from cold and also keep them dry because it holds a lot of air below its under fur. In world, there are 13 species of otters distributed 
mostly in in tropical countries in subtropical countries they have very limited number of species you can see in asia there are in region there are one to four species so i will talk why a particular species is found in area and also i will give you information on the smooth coated otter which is the focal species for today's presentation so as you can see in the map the india has around three species of otters there are four in southeast asia but we are lucky to have three species and these three species are smooth coated otter eurasian otter and small clawed otter the eurasian otter is uh, has a very wide distribution but smooth coated otter which you see in the top of the uh, the slide has is distributed in in india eastward into indonesia or southeast asia but they, we have a small uh, subspecies lutra paspicillata maxwelli which is found in marshes of iraq so smooth coated otter is truly an asian species then the eurasian otter is, has a very wider distribution the eurasian otter is found in the himalayas and in southern india particularly above 700 to 700 meter altitude whereas the smooth coated otter is found below 700 meter altitude and also in the coastal areas the smallest one the small clawed otter has a limited distribution in india it's found in foothills of himalayas and also in the western ghat we have recently found remnant population in orissa along the eastern ghat as well so from the figure the photos you can see the smooth coated otter largely uses big rivers and they share their habitat with gharial and crocodiles the eurasian otter they used smaller streams uh, particularly the forested streams in the himalayas and also in western ghats and the small clawed otter uses narrow streams or very shallow streams having less than 30 cm of waters and you can see they are scats or the which is called sprint in jargon or in otter terminology the sprints of smooth coated otter is usually very well you can see is a, is a is a kind of fluidy um, substances where in you can see lots of fish uh, body parts the scales the the bones similar thing you see you get in eurasian otter but in case of small clawed otter you get lots of crab and small very smaller scales for fish you can see the footprints of smooth coated otter these photos are from chambal river and you can see this there at least in the right hand side photos you can very clearly see five to six otters have moved on on a very uh, clean sandy beach and in the down photo you can see two otters has gone into water so the knowing the footprints of otters of different species will will tell you the the story behind what has happened at that time when the otters were moving so it gives a picture of the activity done by the otters here you can see the sprint and this is again from chambal in the first photo you can see the sprint with urine deposited on sandy substratum and the right hand side you can see large piles of sprint or scat and which has been deposited over time and the down photo which says how a site looks like over the years when otters defecate in one place and these are called communal latrine areas here you can see the signs of otters again these are also signs of eurasian otter from uttarakhand and often they live under the under the tree trunks in burrows so which you can very easily locate if you do a survey along the river bank covering 10 to 15 meters of uh, of the bank area and these are the dense sites which are popularly called as holt h o l t holt which could be the modified uh, uh, 
rocks or rocky subst rock, rocky crevices or dug in sandy banks or under the route the the photos were taken from again from the uttarakhand and the right hand side photo is from the peria tiger reserve taken by one of my students i will briefly talk about i will start from the prey predator relationship what is the diet of smooth coated otters and how it is different from two other indian species which is sometimes found uh, in a in a similar habitat or they are occurring as a sympatric species so as you can see from the diet chart of smooth coated otter they are mostly fish eaters around 92 to 95% of their diet consists of fish whereas eurasian otters diet is around 60 to 65% with fish and the remaining other smaller prey species whereas small clawed otter is mostly this is a small otter mostly dependent on small prey species particularly the crabs and the shrimps which is found in the in the shallow water areas here what i am showing here the people ask me the questions why we should preserve otters or conserve otters when they eat large quantity of fish and they uh, they compete with the fisher fox in many habitats all over india here in the photo you can see the smooth coated otter carrying a tilapia and our studies suggest that they are able to control the the population of exotic fish species or invasive fish species which is now very prominent in most part of the country and tilapia is among it is very dominant they do eat some sport fish also like mahseer and they also eat some prey uh, which has which are very endemic and important for the for the habitat but what i feel that they regulate the population structure of prey species particularly the fish species in rivers and lakes the other important factors why we should conserve otters is that they do not eat fish which is very healthy they prefer to eat they they go for fish which are very sluggish in nature or having some kind of disease so in a way they control the spreading of fish disease in many parts of the country where you might be getting information that fish are dying because of some unknown uh, disease it is it could be that the otters were there earlier and they were controlling the spread of disease by consuming the diseased fish species now the otters are not there so they might be that's why the disease might be spreading so they have very significant ecological role as the top carnivore of the aquatic uh, environment in the same way the tiger which is maintaining the population structure of large ungulate species in 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 forested systems or in terrestrial systems so otters can be an in, the presence of otter can be taken as indicator of a good habitat conditions and maybe availability of good prey species in that area so you can see the the number of uh, number of prey species which is found in a single scat out of 553 sprints which i did my own before my phd work i found that major, majority of the uh, scat has four to five species sometimes six to seven species in a, in a, in a single single uh, scat or single sprint which indicates that the dependence of otters on larger um, large number of prey species not a single or um, a species particularly like tiger which is a large uh, predator and depends on larger prey uh, for their sustenance so here in this map uh, in this uh, chart what you can see is that the 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 frequency of occurrence of a uh, number of species in scat sometimes goes up to seven species but usually four to five species you find it's very difficult to detect those four to five species in a, in a scat and here you can see how the the what is the requirement of otters of uh, 
for to sustain themselves in in a habitat okay, what you can see here roughly around they need 10 to 15 species presence of 10 to 15 species at any given time to sustain otters in a habitat it means that the larger of larger number of prey species the otters are much more prominent in those habitat and they can sustain more but they might be dependent on four to five species or maybe 10 to 12 species at some time but their prey you can say demand largely revolves around two species here i am showing the example in uh, chambal river there are two species called Rhinomogil corsula and Rita Rita, which is predominantly prey species of smooth coated otter. And there is fluctuation in the population. When there is a Rhinomogil corsula, the upper one which you are seeing, scaly fish, when its population is high, at that time the population of the Rita Rita, which is a catchfish, is low. I mean, they switch depending on the availability of prey species. They, they switch from one species to two, two species and sometimes also three species which on which they are dependent. They, they sometimes take fish of around three to four kgs, sometimes around 30 centimeters long, but majority of the fish species which they can consume are from five to 15 uh, centimeter on long. They don't go for larger species because in that in the pursuit of large prey species, they spend more energy and being an aquatic uh, animal, they need to conserve the energy. So usually that's why they go for smaller fish species. During my PhD days, I did radio telemetry study. And this was the first kind of study in Asia and also for India, wherein I captured around four otters and I radio implanted, I implanted the transmitters in their peritoneal cavity so that it should not hanging a foreign body outside in a streamlined uh, aquatic animal, maybe hindrance in capturing prey. So we implanted radio transmitters and we monitored them for almost for more than two years. And for our objective is to derive what kind of habitat otters are using and what is their basic requirements and what is their behavior. Here I am showing the home range of smooth coated otter. Uh, an adult smooth coated otter needs around 17 kilometers of river stretch. If you say Chambal, it's roughly around 250 meter to 300 meter wide. So area requirement is around 6.7 or 7 uh, square kilometer areas. A sub-adult male requires around 11 kilometers of river stretch and it varies uh, from season to season. In winter, the home range length is higher and in monsoon, it's very less, around 4 kilometers of river stretch. Sub-adult females, which are on, the, on, on a growing stage, maybe within two years of time, the maximum home range is around 7 kilometers and the minimum is around five kilometer of a river. And the juvenile female and male, sometimes they form the family groups with small pups, so they don't move much. The maximum, which we recorded at five kilometer with babies. And in summer, it was very less, around 1.5 kilometers. Similar in monsoon, means family with babies, they travel, they less travel, whereas when they become adult, they need around 11 to 17 kilometer of river stretch for sustenance. And this river stretch should have a kind of different conditions. Maybe there is a sandy shore for grooming or rolling on the sand, the rocky stretches for, uh, for hiding or for making a den or hold, and the vegetations along the river bank for movement. What you see in this graph uh, is that uh, I have depicted the, it's a single river uh, wherein I have depicted that the home range is restricted to two rocky stretch of the river and which which is around, you can set five, kilo, five to seven kilometers. So otter moved between these two rocky stretch. 
So in Chambal River, the constraint is not a prey species, but constraint is availability of the den sites, which is which is usually provided by the rocky stretch of the river. And my one of my students, Dr. Asghar Nawab, he did his PhD on smooth coated otter in Kobet, and he manually tracked the uh, the home range of the otters. And what he did is that he followed otters and he could identify them. And he found that in Ramganga River within the Corbett Tiger Reserve, the home ranges varied between four to nine kilometers. And other two river, Mandar and Palen River, the home range was around six kilometers and 17 kilometers. So what I wanted to emphasize that the home range size is regulated here because of two factors, the availability of den site and availability of prey. If the, the, there are more den sites, the home range was smaller. If there are more prey species, then the home range size was smaller. It means it confirms with the other studies on other carnivore species or other mammalian species that home range is governed by the availability of resources. Here you can see the group size of smooth coated otters. And uh, you, you may ask, what is the average group size of otters? Normally, the otters uh, have group size of five to seven individuals or five to nine individuals, but I have sometimes noted as much as 16 individuals in one group, particularly in Dudwa Tiger Reserve and in Corvette Tiger Reserve. It means that if the habitat condition is good, prey availability is good, the home range size will be smaller and there will be large group of otters. But this group usually consists of a mother, which is the family's matriarchal, having three to five babies, and, and sometimes male joining and tending in, in rearing of the, the babies. So the, the smooth coated otter is more or less social. Their behavior pattern is almost equal to other large social carnivores like lions, hyena, and, and wild dogs. Sometimes people say, do otters are nocturnal? What is What are their activity pattern? Here I can show that, that otters are not nocturnal per se. They are crepuscular in their movement or in their activity. They are more active early in the morning between 4 to 8 a.m. And then in the evening between 7, between 5 to, uh, 5 to 9 p.m. And there is gap in between where they take rest. And this resting gap is depend on the temperature of that region. If it is too sunny, then the resting period is wide, is usually wide, maybe from nine or 10 o'clock onwards till evening, they are not very active. They take rest and they go for siesta. And, and, and winter when the temperature is comparatively lower, they are seen being hunting or going out and they're moving around uh, in, in daytime also. So what I feel that the temperature is a governing factors in their activity pattern, but also the disturbance level. If the habitat is very disturbed, you may not see otters during daytime. They hide and they become more active during evening or early in the morning, coinciding with the occurrence of or the activity of prey species. What we have observed, certain fish species are active during evening and morning times. So, Otters also adjust themselves uh, according to the availability of prey species or activity of the prey in a given habitat conditions. So what governs occurring of different otter species? The first thing which is evident is the habitat heterogeneity. If there are diverse habitat conditions, the for, for example, a river stretch having sandy beach, rocky beach, mud, and vegetation cover, they prefer those kind of habitat. 
and if the prey species diversity and richness is higher they prefer that kind of habitat and the third factor which is which i have termed is that site integrity and species tolerance for example fishermen fishing sometimes otter, otters they usually avoid such conditions but over the time they become used to also to these conditions and i have seen in many parts of the country otters actually eating or stealing fish from the fisherman nest leading to the confrontation between the fisherman and otters in which otters are getting killed so in any in a landscape level how otters are distributed in a very large landscape or in a biogeographic zone here i am showing the the gangetic plains in the gangetic plains there are three species of otters which are found sympatrically but they have different habitat conditions and requirement the eurasian otter found mostly above 700 meters or 600 meter altitude which we have observed in the ganga basin from uh, above from rishikesh particularly between rishikesh and deprayag and also we observed these otters um, the, particularly the small clawed otters in narrow streams of the himalayas particularly between 1000 meters to 2000 meters altitude where the water level in streams are less than uh, 30 cm uh, in 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 depth and in the plain part in the gangetic plains it's mostly dominated by smooth coated otters the smooth coated otters again found in sundarban areas in the coastal areas sometime overlapping their distribution with the small clawed otters so this is largely the kind of prey species they forage on as i had said in the beginning that small clawed otters usually live in shallow rivers streams and they eat mostly crabs and shrimps whereas the smooth coated otters live in larger rivers and they eat mostly fish which is bigger usually in average 15 cm 10 to 15 cm in length whereas the eurasian otters is living in between where water level is usually 2 meters and the streams are narrow at higher altitude having less environmental temperature and this governs their morphological uh, morphological uh, morphology of their dentition pattern Ionix are mostly or the small clawed otters are mostly the crab eaters so they are caranacial but the teeth pattern is much more modified than the than the eurasian otter and the smooth coated otters so what are the conservation issues which is affecting the otters and first thing is that the absence of prey species in majority of the aquatic habitat and otters are directly competing with humans for their prey and most of the rivers are devoid of any kind of uh, fish species or prey species because people use very small size mess even sometimes they use mosquito net to fish out all the living organism which is found in an in an habitat and they use all those uh, prey species so the, the depletion of prey is affecting otters very severely second factor which is affecting is the water pollution water pollution is not only affecting the availability of prey but directly might be affecting we don't have any evidence but might be affecting the health of the adult otters the second factor which is affecting is uh, the poaching which is very rampant and in certain part of south southeast asia the the otters are killed particularly for their pelt or the skins which is used for making fur coats here you can see some of the example the first photo is from from uh, confiscated skins from india which came to our institute for uh, for identification the, the second and third uh, photos is from some from southeast asia where we, they are showing that even the hairy nose otter which is critically endangered species are being killed rampantly 
and the auto trade is highly organized and uh, for example around 2000 year 2000 to 2005 there are around 7000 to 8000 auto skin were confiscated in trade and there is estimate that for about 10 otter, otter skin, there is one tiger skin, means the, the otters are vulnerable 10 times than the tiger for their skins in, in trade cases. And here I have depicted the, uh, the information were taken from uh, net and what I have depicted here is that uh, the movement of uh, trade route for otters, usually it goes to uh, China or to Southeast Asia. And if we can control the trade of otters, particularly be vigilant in this route, there are chances that the trade of otters or killing of otters may come down. So now, last as a red list authority, I am monitoring otters since 1996, the global otter population. Eurasian otter is the status is uh, near threatened. The, the smooth coated is vulnerable. This Asian small clodder is mostly vulnerable nowadays. And the hair, hairy nose otter is now considered as endangered. And all the S four Asian otter species are showing declining in their population, particularly the smooth coated otters and the hairy nose otters in many parts of South and Southeast Asia. So here I would like to uh, say what maintains otter species diversity. If we want to conserve otters, what should we do? We need to maintain the landscape diversity and the characteristics. We should not convert the natural landscape entirely into agriculture field or human habitations. We need to conserve the prey species. Generally, 100 kg of prey species supports 1 kg of predator biomass. So if the weight of otter, average weight of otter, you can take 6 kg and there are 10, so it's 60 kg is coming. And accordingly, we need to maintain the prey biomass in the in a condition in, in an habitat. Otherwise, the people, the otter will move away from those habitat where prey availability is very less. The third factor which is affecting otters are the protection from poaching and persecution. And definitely the decline of otters in India and Southeast Asia, largely because of poaching and also depletion of prey uh, species. Coming to site integrity, we need at least 17 kilometer of river stretch. If our river is around 250 meters to 300 meter wide to maintain a single population of otters, having a family of five to nine otters, five to nine uh, individuals. So unless until we provide adequate uh, undisturbed habitat condition or river, river, for example, where I did my study, it may affect otter population. Then the third, the other factor which is affecting is the adequate vegetation cover along the shore line. If the shore lines are cleared of vegetation or burned, or used for agriculture purpose, it hardly provides any kind of cover for otters and usually otter move away. So that is the case of Gangetic uh, Basin. Along the Ganga River, we have cleared the entire uh, vegetation along the river bank and mostly they are being cultivated seasonal vegetables which affects the otter population. And if there is a good uh, denning, resting and grooming site like, for example, within the protected areas or the microhabitat characteristics governs the availability of otters, what I studied in Chambal, that presence of rocky stretches and vegetations are important for maintaining otter population. Now to conserve otter, what should be done in, in both at the administrative level for the for the researcher or biologist like us and the, for the managers. We need to maintain heterogeneity in the river and wetland. We need to monitor otter population trend and their habitat based on standard survey methods, which we have published 
in various literatures available for India and for Asian countries. We need to know what is happening to the otter population when they are under threat, when there is so much of trade is going on. So usually we don't have any information, but over the years, this inf information has been gathered. We need to control poaching and persecution through protection and networking. The All the three species are otters in India are protected under the Wildlife Protection Act. And the, the act itself is so strong that it's definitely preventing poaching, further poaching or declining of population. We need to ensure adequate prey base by providing protection to wetlands and other habitats. We need to enhance protected area network covering wetlands and rivers. We need to conduct EIA study for all development projects affecting wetlands and otter habitats so that we should know actually what is happening and how otters are getting affected. Whether, for example, creation of a reservoir is a positive trend for otters or a negative factor which is affecting them. We need to undertake awareness campaign to conserve wetlands and the obligate species. Particularly, we should promote this among the fishermen communities who are the major stakeholders in otter conservation. And sometimes they definitely kill otters when their, their own survival is affected. So these are the major factors we can do as a biologist or as managers to conserve otters in India. And before I conclude, I would like to show the work which I did uh, some 30 years back and institute film this work as it was a pioneer work on otters. And I will urge the biologists to come forward and take more research and more conservation work on otters. This is what I did in Chambal. I monitored the otter population along a 450 kilometer stretch of Chambal River. And then I identified different families. I captured a few members from each family. Then I radio implanted the transmitter. Using special antenna equipment, Hussein will now be able to observe this agile and elusive animal. He will obtain data on their habitat needs and breeding biology. This information will help plan measures for better conservation of otters. And also the river conservation in India. And I take this opportunity to thank everyone who helped me being an otter biologist. And also I would like to thank uh, the, the CZA and Dr. Sonali and Arundhati for giving me this opportunity to present my work, which I did 30 years back. Some of the work I have taken from my students and thank you everyone. I hope it helps. Thank you so much, sir, for the in-depth talk, not just on the biology of the species, but also the resource preference between the different species found in India and the conservation challenges and way forward. It's indeed a long, you know, it's almost like three decades of research that you have showcased in a very short span. So thank you so much. We now move on to the section on the Zoom, wherein we will speak on the Zoom, and then we will take question answers for this session at the end. So, um, we have for the zoo section, we have with us Dr. Rajesh Patel, who is the superintendent and in charge of the Dr. Shama Prasad Mukherjee Zoological Garden, Surat. He's a veterinarian by training and has over 19 years of experience in the field of wildlife management and healthcare research. So over to you, sir, to speak more on the zoo. Good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, good afternoon, sir. I would like to thank uh, Usain, sir, to give uh, in-depth uh, information regarding this water species. We are keeping water since uh, in our zoo since last 17 years, but uh, whatever the information today I uh, have got from Hussain sir, it's 
much more important uh, in uh, our zoo management also uh, i would like to uh, give some details about our zoo history and what we are presently uh, doing in water species uh, surat zoo is uh, initially was a mini zoo in uh, it uh, established in 84 uh, at uh, uh, city uh, center area uh, after uh, 92 on uh, uh, cjd uh, come in force uh, there is uh, no space for future expansion and uh, specific uh, requirement for species which we have kept in uh, mini zoo so corporation has decided to relocate and uh, develop a new site on uh, sarthana area which is 81 acres area uh, your existing zoo and was uh, 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 open for uh, public in 2003 at presently we are displaying uh, uh, total 47 uh, species in captivity and uh, about th 390 animals. Uh, yearly, uh, 9 to 10 lakhs visitors are uh, uh, taking visit of our zoo and uh, at present we are under uh, medium zoo category. Uh, we have uh, very good uh, breeding of some species like uh, smooth coated water, uh, sloth beer, uh, foreign antelope, uh, tiger, uh, uh, lion, and uh, hippo too. We have, uh, as uh, in slide, we have a separate uh, section in uh, zoo for uh, routine management and other things. Next one. Next one. Uh, within zoo premises, we have uh, created one butterfly park for uh, uh, conserving the species which we have found in our uh, premises. At present, it is in uh, 70 square meter areas, uh, totally covered and uh, mainly in seasonal, we are uh, finding 30 species uh, in this uh, main season. Next. We have uh, one section uh, separate uh, well established wildlife interpretation center for education and awareness. In uh, that area, we have uh, three parts. One is uh, uh, a nocturnal house, uh, second is uh, for uh, uh, education. <coughs> and in nocturnal house, we have created one sound and uh, uh, sound show uh, to create uh, artificial uh, atmosphere in uh, just like uh, uh, wildlife. Next one. Next level. Next level. Water. Uh, mainly, we have uh, otter initially uh, got uh, rescued from uh, flood prone area in 2006. At that time, we have uh, got two species, uh, two females. Uh, after uh, one year, we have one more uh, male rescued from forest official, and after that, uh, pairing. After two years, we have got successful uh, captive breeding in otter species. We have uh, till date uh, uh, 25 uh, puppies rear in captivity and uh, we have exchanged uh, with other zoos also. But unfortunately, when you, uh, in that zoo, nobody has uh, get successful breeding. Why? I don't know. But uh, I, I, afterward, I would like to get some uh, guidelines from Hussain sir that what uh, we can uh, mainly uh, uh, keep in mind for successful breeding of water in captivity. <coughs> to uh, make video be shared. We have got very good exchange animals from other animal against the water. At present, we have a total uh, thirty. Uh,
this channel video of uh, last year trading uh, video. Uh, at present, we have total 13 orders in captivity, and uh, out of the eight are males and six females. Out of the one is the battle female. And uh, during this 13, 14 year experience, we have noticed that in the group, only one dominant male and female uh, can be women in the group. Whenever they uh, from the can drop uh, one. Uh, but the male or female dominate, they will fight and uh, during the fighting, uh, one the big animal is separated and all the whole group are attacked on that and uh, uh, finally if we will not uh, time to separate it out, we will kill the animal. So uh, at present we have uh, created a separate facility and keep uh, total four pairs in separate uh, enclosure. And hopefully this year or next year we are expecting to get uh, in-house and or more coffee in uh, captive building. Once upon a time, Surajju having the uh, group of trading orders in city Afterwards, there are uh, incidents of reporting and uh, severe injury to uh, uh, one male and one female group. After that, we have decided to get uh, separate. So at present we are giving for uh, one or two clips with uh, the uh, main parent. Uh, and when uh, the male or female puppy is better and uh, at the beautiful age we are separating them out. Whatever animals we have are uh, parents of uh, rescued animals, so we are trying to get male or female from uh, uh, at the zoo or we are requested uh, to forest officer also as the South Gujarat region is the uh, having uh, otters in wild, even in Surat uh, Kapi, we have, uh, have spotted many otters. So we have requested the uh, Yekosa to uh, pair if the male or female we can get. We have uh, planning to change the also and uh, continue for further building. We are also planning for uh, 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 a separate breeding of exhibit breeding uh, facility and uh, for that we have also submitted design in uh, drawing but some very rare with severe uh, we will uh, totally uh, sort it out and uh, create of exhibit breeding facility also. This is all about the present we are working and in future we are planning for this order conservation and breeding in uh, ex situ condition. Thank you, ma'am. Right. Okay. Thank you, sir, for the you know for the presentation on this on the zoo, which was and the species and the videos that you've showcased of the conservation breeding program that's currently in place in your zoo. So we now move on to the question and answer session for both the sections. So, Dr. Sen, are you there? Yes, I'm there. Fine. Uh, so, sir, we'll go for the first question for you. The first question is that uh, with the changes in fisheries practice, what are the impacts on smooth coated otters? Can, can you repeat the question again, please? So, the question is that uh, with changes in fisheries practices, what do you, what are the impacts on smooth coated otters? Yeah. Um... It depends on how we define the the fishing, uh, the change in fishing pattern. One could be the use of smaller size of a net. Okay, the that's called mesh size. We have a kind of recommended size of mesh for fishing in different habitat conditions. So if we use smaller fish size mesh size then we sieve out all the living organism which are found in our wetland or aquatic systems. So first question is, to, to answer your first question, the first thing, because of change in the fishing pattern, we sieve out all the living organism that reduces the prey availability for otters. Second thing is that sometimes otters are getting entangled in fishing net also and they are killed by the fishermen communities so there are the two factors the first thing is depletion of prey 
Second thing is direct persecution by the farmers, fish farmers. Say, for example, in coastal part of Andhra Pradesh, okay, where the stake of fish is very high for captive fisheries, maybe a fish or maybe prawn, they are directly in confrontation with the fishermen, resulting in the death of otters. So these are the major factors. There are rules and regulations which government has formed. What we need to do is the strict enforcement of those guidelines which has been developed after the years of studies. So that's, that's my answer for this question. All right. So, so following up with that question is also that what forms of community engagement with fishermen do you think would help uh, with fishermen who are dependent on the same habitat would help the species? See, when it comes about economic loss, okay, that that hurts the fishermen. So, what we need to do promote first thing is to gain their confidence, promote alternative livelihood options for them, maybe win them out. This is a good example of um, ecotourism program, which has been taken up in in the coastal parts of India, particularly in, in the coastal Andhra Pradesh, uh, where they have developed a kind of alternate livelihood option for the communities. So this is, this is to gain confidence that um, that we are doing for something, we understand their loss and we are doing something to compensate them. This is the first thing is gaining the confidence of the fishermen communities. Second thing is that educating them about the benefit of otter conservations. As I said, that otter used to eat the, the slow moving or disease prey species. Now that we have removed otters, that disease spreading unless and until we educate the the local communities the mass in general our message conservation message will not go particularly in the face of economic loss so second priority i will give to educate the people as much as possible so All right, zoo, sir. zoo is an yeah. example i mean if i i don't see many otters in delhi zoo so there were otters and good population of smooth coated otters over the years uh, the otters are not now are not there in Delhi Zoo. So if we can promote the at least uh, in exhibit to educate people, people will know what otters are look like and what kind of conservation measures is required. I think it is we are lagging in conserving otters in captivity. Okay, sir. Uh, so, so the next question for you is that uh, so in terms of home ranges, do the do uh, do uh, do different family groups overlap, and are there any records of intraspecific competition or ag aggressions between the groups in these overlap areas? Yeah, this this is what I have observed. I will explain my narration. That what sometimes it happens. The the first thing you note that the otters are basically social carnivores, but they don't have strict uh, home range, which is called territory. The territoriality in otter is much more fluid. I mean, they don't defend their territory. Sometimes the, the two family groups may join together. And if they're in larger group, they are more much more efficient in catching the prey species. And they forage efficiently. After foraging, which I observed actually in Chambal, is that then the, the group will again break. So the group size, sometimes look bigger because there are two or three groups they have matched together so they have very good home range and sometimes the adult male also patrol and uh, the home range but when they meet they they behave as a single group so it means that the they have home range defined in which they are moving for their day-to-day -day sustenance but it is not very strictly protected that this is my area and you cannot intrude it. And rather they take advantage of, of the two group or larger group joining together and do a communal fishing activities. And then they forage and they disperse again into different groups. So the group size sometimes is very fluid. Unless until you are monitoring them, you will not know that they belong to two or three different groups. 
All right, sir. So, and the last question for you is that can you elaborate more on the uh, you know the measures that are in place to prevent the poaching of otters if there is any at the at mo at the moment? Yeah, the first thing is that we are struggling to find out the extent of otter trade. We do get uh, pelts which are confiscated by the forest department or the enforcing agencies, law enforcing agencies. But we don't know how many otters are getting killed because they are very small carnivores. So unless and until we detect their presence and absence in wild and what laws has been done in a given areas, we will not know the extent of the mortalities. So first thing is to assess the extent in trade. And the second thing is that the train the enforcement agencies to identify who the species which are in being trade or which has been confiscated. Sometimes uh, there is mis, uh, you can say, identifications, like some uh, pelt came from Himachal Pradesh to institute, and we thought they are of smooth-coated otters, but when we examined them very closely, we found that they are of smooth-coated otters, not the, they are of the Eurasian otter, not the smooth-coated otters. So what we need, the giving training, to the enforcement agencies and the, the frontline staff about identification of otters and their basic requirements. And I am very happy to know that doctor said that he greatly benefited from this small talk. I mean, we can organize small talks or small online training program for the zoo officers. So they will know that how an otter looks like, what are the factors which is affecting and how to captive or conserve them, particularly how do, do we do the conservation building of otters uh, in for the purpose of, I mean, uh, release in wild or rewilding them in, uh, in wild conditions. So the situation is not that bad that we start conservation building, but we should have stock, sufficient stock of uh, otters in our zoos to educate people about the otters. Otherwise, nobody knows much about them. Right. OK, so, uh, so those were the questions for you. We now move on to questions for the zoo. So Dr. Rajesh, the first question for you is that uh, otters are gregarious species. So what special enrichment tools do you use at the zoo to ensure their all time well-being? Because there's like you have said, as you said, that this conservation breeding of otters in the zoo. Ma'am, as present, we are not uh, doing extra caring. Uh, we have uh, initially we have uh, tried a lot, but uh, in captivity, they are not preferring what we have artificially added. So we have uh, uh, initially lost two, three uh, puppies due to some mistake from our side. Uh, so we have just uh, leave them and uh, basic requirement we are providing them uh, just like solid. Uh, uh, soil uh, they are uh, themselves uh, preparing burrows and uh, breeding them and we are not disturbing them we are just uh, taking care of during this uh, uh, pregnancy period and then uh, first uh, one month of uh, after delivery time at that time we are mainly taking care for their uh, fresh food and uh, the choice of food which we have observed that they are more liking the, the, that uh, species of fish we are offering and we have got very good success in uh, surviving uh, since last three, four years, all the puppies we have survived. All right, sir. Uh, so, so the next question for you is that you already have a butterfly garden and, you know, uh, like a nocturnal house and bird sound display uh, station already in place. What are your future plans for the zoo? Uh, we are uh, planning them for uh, uh, at present we have uh, some vacant uh, enclosure in which uh, initially they were constructed and uh, not we are not getting the species so we are first uh, trying to get that species so uh, more species can be displayed in zoo in future we are planning for uh, uh, captive uh, breeding uh, for um, some species which uh, we are lacking some uh, facility like night uh, extra breeding and uh, uh, nursing uh, shelters so we are trying on that also. In future, we are planning for uh, renew uh, our uh, existing uh, nocturnal house also, and interpretation center. All right, sir. So, and so the next question, like the last question for you, is that any are there any special education activities or you know any uh, kind of outreach programs that you do in the zoo for you know conservation awareness? 
Yes, ma'am. Uh, recently, we have started uh, with our social media also for education awareness and uh, outreach program. Uh, at present, this program also we are sharing with our local uh, My Surat app uh, and other social media also. Uh, periodically, we are planning to uh, arrange some uh, keeper talks and uh, other uh, extra activities. And uh, we are frankly want to say in uh, water breeding, we are lacking data efficient. We have no doubt we are successfully breeding the water in captivity, but uh, on that uh, research, and uh, other we are very poor we are also uh, trying to focus on that issue so it will help uh, in future for other you also all right sir so those were the questions for you and with that we come to the conclusion of today of the 20th know your species know your zoo talk on the smooth coated otter and the surat zoo so on behalf of cza i would like to thank dr yeah, Hussain like and dr rajesh patel for taking our taking time out from the schedules and joining yeah. us for this talk. And I would also like to thank the audience for being with us throughout this session. And would also like to inform them that next week on the 29th of September, we will have, be having the talk on the Indian wild ass and the Sardar Patel Zoological Park Kivaria. So do join in for that talk as well. And Surat Zoo will be continuing their outreach activities till the end of the end of the week. So do tune into the social media pages to know more. So thank you so much once again to both of you. Thank you. Namaskar. Thank you. So you're muted, Dr. you're muted. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Arundhati. It was very nice. I really enjoyed this session. I yes, hope I... that uh, my talk was, um, I mean, informative enough to at least initiate some research and some more conservation work. Thank you very much for the opportunity. It definitely you was and the entire CZ team. Thank, Thank you. you sir. Thank you, sir. Namaskar. Namaskar.